Hey folks, it's Joe at Emerald City Orchids, and today we're going to talk about one of my favorite of all the genera of orchids, Maxillaria. But it's a little tricky because Maxillaria exists from Central America down to South America from levels at sea level all the way up to 3,500 meters. So there's Maxillarias that grow hot, there's ones that grow cold, some are shady, some are bright. But in general, they're actually very forgiving orchids because they can grow in an intermediate range to fairly wide temperatures. A lot of maxillarias can get quite cold and quite hot. I'm going to show you a few that I really like. And one of the things I love about maxillaria is how flexible they are. You can grow that maxillaria in a pot. You can grow it on a stick in a basket. You can grow it in bark. You can grow it in moss. They really do grow a lot of different ways. First, let's start with probably the most famous of all the maxillaria, Maxillaria tenuifolia. It's really famous because it smells like a lot of maxillaria, but this one smells like coconut. And it's not just coconut, it's like coconut candy, or like a pina colada. It's a very coconutty coconut. It's right here. We have it growing in a basket. It's got this lovely coconut smell. Yes, it's got an orangey-red flower, but also the same thing is growing here in a pot right? Same plant. We also have Maxillaria tenuifolia growing mounted to a, a wooden plank with a little bit of moss around its roots. It's growing pretty well this way. And just to show you guys, it's also growing here on a piece of tree fern. We have it growing on tree fern. Maxillaria tenuifolia can grow any way you want. You can grow it in a pot with moss. You can grow it in a pot with bark. You have to adjust it to your watering schedule. So if you water a lot, maybe put it in a pot with bark. And if you're the type of person that forgets to water, put it in a pot with moss. A lot of maxillarias can actually tolerate drying out a bit between waterings. For the ones that have a pseudobulb, you just watch it. If it's full and fat and looks real smooth on the outside, you're watering it enough. If it starts to get thin and wrinkly like some of these are doing on the back bulbs, then we know we didn't water that one enough. And sometimes maxillarias, they grow out. And they'll split as they grow, so it gets bigger going up. And they'll all be... Down here, the little bitty tiny ball of roots with this giant plant. So you should maybe up pot them a little bit as you go, but they can take a really small root ball. I also want to show you guys a lot of the other different maxillarias because how can you tell what a maxillaria look like? This one's got a very clear pseudobulb and a very thin grassy leaf. But maxillarias morphologically come in a lot of different shapes and sizes. Here's one that's quite similar where you can see the pseudobulb and the grassy leaf, but it makes a very long rhizome, right? So it's going a long, long way, and then it has a pseudobulb, and then it's going a long, long way, and then it has a pseudobulb, a periodic pseudobulb. Some maxillarias, like this one here, it has a very flat leaf, and it's really hard to see the pseudobulb. The pseudobulb can be all the way, tucked all the way back down in there, rather under, undersized pseudobulbs. This one takes, these types with the flat leaf, they tend to make a wing-shaped flower, uh, and it'll have a fragrance. A lot of them have a fragrance, very bright oranges and yellows. Here's one that's like that that does make more of a pseudobulb, but the flowers look more similar, and that's Delonii. Beautiful specimen here, very fragrant, lovely yellow flower. This one is just starting to open. You can see that triangular wing shape. A lot of the maxillarias, their flowers will make a triangular wing shape. Some of them are quite small. This is a little terrarium maxillaria. has a lovely little flower. It's a beautiful plant when it's growing, too. So when you grow something like this, it's really pleasant, even when it's not um, in flower. This type of maxillaria, when they're teeny, teeny, tiny like this, a lot of times they do like to be on the wetter side of things, and they can also do a little bit cooler. I have here one that I think is one of my personal favorites. It's, it's not as rewarding on a flower as some people would like it to be, but I really like it. This is Maxillaria spilotanti. It's got a little polka dotted pink flower. It's very, very small. But when it grows, the plant grows, it looks kind of like bamboo. It's got a very bamboo-like appearance. It does make pseudobulbs. Not many and not often. Somewhere in the plant, there will be a few. Some of them have kind of left pseudobulbs completely behind, and they're just going with the straight bamboo. I brought these out to show you what these look like when they, when they grow. It has more of a bamboo pattern to it. And when the flower comes off on this, it doesn't create a large stem. A lot of maxillarias don't make a large stem. They'll have the flower right on the plant. This one makes a little bright pink flower right on the plant. Here's the stem. You can see where the stem from the old one was. 
right? So it's not a long way out. It goes from here to here, boom, flower. That is one drawback to Maxillaria. If you have one, especially one of the fragrant ones, and many of them are fragrant, you go in to smell it, and then a little leaf sticks you in the eye. So it's kind of a booby trap plant, but they are fun. Here's one where it's got a very large, uh, the plant is very large, the flower ends up pretty large. It's got a huge pseudobulb that can form on the way up. So it, cre it creates a series of pseudobulbs. And if you look carefully, you see there's roots on here. These roots, because of these roots, a lot of maxillaria are very divisible. If you want to divide them, it's very easy to divide them. You just break it apart. Try to have at least three pseudobulbs uh, per division if you can. Uh, peel back the husk. If it's one like this tenia folia, these tenia folias make a husk that's on the plant and the root can be under it. And if you're trying to repot it, pull, peel back this husk. Can you see there's roots under here? Can you see the root? I'm asking you like you're gonna answer, but it's all online here. Uh, there's roots under there, folks. And if you can peel that back a little bit, uh, make sure that the root is adjacent to something moist, which would be contact with the wood that you're watering, the moss that you're watering. You need that root to have some kind of contact with water. It will figure out where it wants to go from there and root in there. Maxillarias in general, when you grow them, we recommend a fairly bright light. That's not to say direct sun, but brighter than you would grow a Phalaenopsis, something closer to Cattleya, for example. Then you want to water them generously when you water them. Around here in the Northwest, that's about twice a week uh, for your average home. Um, when you water them, make sure that they're draining. Again, maxillarias can dry out a little, a little bit. So if it's summertime and the thing dries out, that's okay. Just make sure that you are on a continuous watering cycle so that the thing isn't dry for too long. Watch your pseudobulbs. If the pseudobulb is full and fat, you're watering it enough. It starts to wrinkle. Again, you should try watering more often. If you're seeing pseudobulbs get mushy and yellow, you're watering too much. It's too wet. Either the medium is too wet or there's not enough airflow. With a lot of orchids, maxillaria included, they grow in trees. So a gentle air movement can do wonders. Add a little fan. If you're not sure, get a little cheap fan online, have it delivered to your house, and it can create a very gentle air movement in the area where you're growing orchids. Your maxillarias will definitely appreciate that. Your maxillarias also can change leaf colors and drop old leaves. Old leaves can turn yellow pretty quick and fall off. That's natural. If the leaves are growing in a brighter yellow, it may mean that your light's too bright. And if the leaves are getting super, super dark green, you may need to add a little bit of light. One of the things about maxillaria that's really great is that they do communicate. So watch these signs and the maxillaria will tell you whether or not it's happy in its growing conditions. If you guys have any other questions about maxillaria, drop a comment and we'll try to address them all online. Otherwise, you can always reach out to us by sending us a message. We do hope you enjoy these videos and we hope you will tune in next time when we cover another great orchid genus.